and welcome everyone to Cape Ann Art Waves. I'm Christine Fisher, your host of today's program, coming to you by way of 1623 Studios Media, located in Gloucester, Massachusetts. My fellow co-producer, Jacqueline Gittem DeFalco, will be your host next time. We're ever so grateful to our growing listener community and equally grateful to our sponsors. We are so appreciative of their tremendous support. The show does not go on without them. Our sponsors are Prince Insurance Agency, MK Fisher Visual Artist, Martha K. Anger of Compass Real Estate Brokerage, Protective Packaging, Cape Ann Savings Bank, and Common Crow. What an impressive list. <laughs> so thank you again. We also want to thank our partner, Sea Arts, for being our marketing arm and doing such a terrific job with their online e-blast and profiling each of our artist guests. We also want to thank 1623 Studios for distributing and, and broadcasting our show. We want to give a nod of thanks to local musicians Steve Lacey and Pat Verga for their original music. Our program serves as a platform to learn from our area artists and makers, enjoying conversations that help us glean insight into their artistic journey and work. Today, I'm thrilled to bring forward the wonderfully talented painter and sought-after teacher, Maria Melatesta. Maria has been on the faculty of Montserrat College of Art in Beverly, Massachusetts since 2004, having influenced many students as a teacher of mixed media drawing and painting. Also in recent years, she has done workshops with the Rocky Neck Art Cultural Center here in Gloucester, as well as the Art Room in Topsfield, among others. Maria received her education at the School of the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston and prior Leslie College, in Cambridge, along with the University of California in Davis. She also has a studio in Boston South End, where she's been for 20 years. She's represented by Stitch and Tickle, also in the South End. She cites the workshops taken with renowned teacher Timothy Hawksworth as having had a very meaningful influence on her work. And I look forward to learning more. Maria has participated in numerous group and solo shows. Last May, she had a solo exhibition, Brushstrokes, Fields and Ponds at the Jane Deering Gallery here in Gloucester. And I'm showing a piece right now from that show. It was really gorgeous. I had the good fortune of going. Uh, in 2021 to present, Maria has participated in the Corporate Art Loan Program at the De Cordova Sculpture Park and Museum, a gem of a museum, by the way. In 2021, she served as a Gediman Artist Residency Committee member with the Cultural Center here in Gloucester. She participated in several uh, residencies, many of which were located across the pond. So welcome, Maria Malatesta. <laughs> Hello, Christine. <laughs> Wonderful to have you here. I'm delighted Thank to have you, you here. I, I, you. Loved, I loved your description just to kind of get us launched. I loved your description the other day when we talked about your interview and our conversation and you, you uh, talked about just the unfolding of your journey. I thought that was such a great way to <laughs> sum up your ongoing journey, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, hopefully, yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course That's it is. So, yeah, let's let's unpack it a little bit. Okay. All right. So, um, I'm, I I think I've you know I've I, I've always been painting. Um, mm -hmm. Like most of us, you know, we painted in all of us painted in grammar school and. Um, but even in high school, I was um, at, really involved in painting and sculpting and uh, spent a lot of time in, in the art room, mm -hmm. um, probably more than I was supposed to. And, um, and I also took private classes after school mm -hmm. um, with a uh, um, wonderful woman, actually, Mary Jack King, who she was just great. Um, so you know, I always had this feeling that I wanted to paint. <laughs> and, um, you know, after graduating high school, I, um, you know, I had work. So I, you know, I'd have, I had different jobs. I did drafting for a while, you know, I took draft. I mean, that was close to art. I had a drawer and, um, and at that time, you know, I would still take classes at night wherever I could. Mm -hmm. um, so 
um, let's see, you know, after, after I'm, I, I did want to go back to school. And so, you know, I, I went to Leslie mm -hmm. um, in my late twenties actually. And um, I went there because again, I was always kind of resisting well, you know, this, you know, you have to make a living and I was resisting like really going to art school. So, you know, art therapy, I chose Leslie because of they had, a, they do have an incredible art therapy program. And I thought, well, you know, maybe I can do that. And so I went there and it was, I will say I, my time at Leslie was really wonderful. I met really incredible people there and lifelong friends. Mm -hmm. Um, it was probably an important part of my life and it was and um but I was still doing the art and uh, with the encouragement of some of the teachers um it was like I really wanted to do my own work <laughs> and, and, and artwork and the art therapy it, it kind of didn't make sense for me <laughs> and to move forward with that so even though it's interesting Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, well, in some ways it's all therapy. <laughs> and so, right. yeah, all yeah. development is self development, as they say. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it is. It's totally. And so, so um, from there, I, um, someone said, well, why don't you go to the museum school? Why don't you try the museum school? So, all right, I went over to, to I had taken a class there years earlier, actually. And, um, when I was in that period of taking classes here and there. And so I, I, you know, I knew, I knew the place and that was a great class. And so I walked into the museum school for my interview and I was like, I want to be here. This is it, <laughs> you know, so. You just knew, you instinctively just knew. I, it was the energy. I just really wanted to be there. And so again, I went part-time for a very long time. I was going to be there forever if I kept that up. And, um, in that way. And I did a lot of figure drawing at that time. I was working with um, uh, 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 closely, pretty closely with Miroslav Antic, who was an incredible teacher and um, really taught me a lot about drawing. And I'd go there every week. I mean, I, I took that class for seven years. <laughs> and yeah. And um, yeah, it was it was just great. And take other classes too, when you know, you know, painting and was always drawing and painting for me. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of other, as we know, ways to go, but I that's what it was for me. And mm -hmm. um so yeah, eventually it Mero actually said, it's time to come full time, <laughs> you know. So I um uh, yeah, so yeah, I got to swing this. Okay. So, um, I did that. I did go full time for a couple of years and it, it, you know, it, it was pretty incredible. Um, Oh, I bet it's the immersiveness, right? Oh, Just well, it really was. Yeah. It really was. And so, you know, and, and more wonderful tea, you know, I, you, you think if I, I think about my journey, I can't talk about it without mentioning these people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who have been in my life. Mm -hmm. um who have pulled me along you know mm -hmm. teach. I mean I've I feel very fortunate for the people that I've worked with and um and you know as artists and when I was at in Davis I went out there for a year I took a class you know I started taking classes there and and I'll come back to why I'm saying this it's immediately, I think as artists we're so lucky because we go into an art community and we have a community. You know, mm -hmm. you take a class and you have a community. It's mm -hmm. like, I, I think we're, um, we do that. And so, so being at the museum school, I mean, it, it's a lot about the people I met there, my friends, you mm -hmm. know, we keep each other going. Mm -hmm. um, right. And it had a pivotal influence on you. Uh, I want to, I want to, uh, be sure that we address this wonderful portrait that you did, Maria, of one of your teachers, because you're talking about influential, meaningful relationships, um, Bernie Rubenstein. Talk Barney. To Barney, excuse me. Yeah, well, Barney, he's no longer with us, but Barney, he, he you know, he, he, was, he taught there for a long time. And um, when I took his class, I only took this one class, he was older. 
And um, yeah, he was great. And he's an incredible, he was an incredible artist. He has work at the MFA and just really amazing still lifes that incorporate drawing. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I encourage people to see, to look at them, but um, so yeah, so one day, you know, we're doing the model, you know, we're painting portraits and one day the model didn't show up. So, so Barney um, models for us. He was our model that day. So that, that's why it was kind of fun to show that one because it, you know, there he is. Oh yeah, I like it, I like it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like it a lot. Let's talk about somebody else who's been very instrumental. And I know you wanted to talk about him, Timothy Hawksworth. Yeah. So, okay. So after I finished the museum school, um, I'm, I'm going to give a, a little um, precursor to this. Yeah. When I, when I was at the museum school full time, I mean, before I went full time, I was doing a lot of drawing, very expressive. Mm -hmm. And then when I started going full time, I somehow, um, well, I like color. I love color. And so my work became, and I love this work, but it, you know, I was doing um, eight by eight inch cubes of just color mm -hmm. and layers, but, you know, orange, blue, but, you know, there'd be layering. So, but the surfaces, it, it was really about the surfaces and smooth, but not totally, you know, <clears throat> um, but they were, there was a certain precision about them. Mm -hmm. So um, after graduating and I did, I did this huge wall. I wish I had a photo, huge wall and, you know, I had a hundred of them mm -hmm. all lined up. So it was about the color relationships, which mm -hmm. I'll talk about more later, you know, but you know, how these colors, you know, sometimes subtle shifts, sometimes dramatic color changes. And mm -hmm. so, but when I graduated, it was like, oh, you know, I, you know, I'm a little, you know, I, you know, so I wanted to draw. I just wanted to, um, I'm done. I need to do something, yeah, break out. So a friend of mine said, Maria, you should go to Bennington and they have these, they, well, they don't do them anymore, but these wonderful week long workshops, uh, mm -hmm. Art New England and um, work with Timothy Hawksworth. I hadn't known who he was then. But I said, all right, you know, I looked into it and it's like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And I love Vermont. I used to live there. So it's like any, any reason to go to Vermont. And so um, in Bennington, it's just wonderful. And Tim, yeah. So the first, Tim, uh, yeah, it, the first day, every day, every morning, he starts the workshop with a talk mm -hmm. and he talks about process. Mm -hmm. and drawing and poetry and making marks and you know being expressive and being who you are mm -hmm. and he's gifted in this way of of teaching it, mm -hmm. uh, I've never come across anyone else who teaches like this and uh, that first day I said this is what I had hoped to hear my whole life about painting you know mm -hmm. this, this speaks to me mm -hmm. and I ended up just it was a fabulous week just working with the figure you know, being very expressive, they're getting bigger and bigger. I was working like this before and the paintings are like, you know, I'm putting up more paper. And so, yeah, so I think working with, and I ended up working with Tim he, uh, again and going to Bennington again. And um, he has- yeah, You did several workshops with I him. I did several with Tim, yeah. He, he did he, several. He had, and, you know, I have to say, many of our other guests have also referenced Timothy Hawksworth. So- you yeah. know, a lot of folks on Cape Ann have been highly influenced by him. I, I would like to jump forward, if it's okay, Maria. Yeah. I, I want to get into your art practice and how you approach art making. And, you know, your work is honestly so luminescent. And I think the first image that you wanted to talk about was stripes, because it kind of bridges you know, the, the formality of your academic world as you break out into more of uh, uh, expressive. So let's, let's talk about stripes first. Okay, so stripes came out of the cubes that I was doing um, yes. when, I, when I left school and um, 
was working in my studio. Mm -hmm. I was still doing the cue, you know, I was doing expressive and, you know, now I'm doing both. And mm -hmm. um, I started playing with format in that mm -hmm. particular body of work and um, scale and, and these stripes still about color relationships. Uh huh. Yeah. So, um, and I still continue to do those. Those aren't from 20 years ago. I don't know those, they're a little more recent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I do continue to, to, to do those. Yeah. Um, as I said, they're more precise. And so mm -hmm. I seem, I seem to need both. I seem to need to do the more precise and the expressive. Not right. at the same time, but um, I think it's marvelous. It kind of speaks to the yin and the yang, right? Yeah, the yin and the yang that fuel you. Let's let's keep going. I, we have a wonderful image of water, and I want to show this right now. But I also thought it was wonderful what you had shared with me as we were prepping for our conversation today. Your interest in always incorporating, you seem to need to create a sense of space in all of your compositions. And I see it. I mean, it's very clear. Oh, well, good. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's part of who I am that, you know, I, because I've thought about it a lot. I mean, it, the places that I feel most comfortable are, um, or, you know, it, on the beach <laughs> when, and uh, as most of us, but also in the mountains, you know, I love, and because there is, um, you know, like when I, drive to Vermont and I you, you go up 91 and all of a sudden everything opens up right you know, and you know or, or driving up into the whites you know everything opens up um and I I like I need that um mm -hmm. so yeah so and also on the ocean you know we have um this re this light that is is pretty amazing incredible. yeah it's pretty incredible. Yeah. it's incredible and it's always changing you know and yep. and it changes by season it changes by time of day it changes moment to moment changes by weather and um so i think you know that it's not like when i'm painting i'm gonna like i'm gonna paint what i saw this morning it's not that i think it's more that i internalize it yes and 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 um, it comes out. And so and you I see express it. it. Yeah, you internalize it and express it. And we can see it in that wonderful piece behind you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's keep going. I do want to talk about that piece too. But let's talk about some of these um, beautiful pieces that you've done of water. Um, and we have, uh, and I hope that you, you can relate to this, water number 17. Which yes, is, you know, water, water number 17. Um, this is a dark piece. Yes, right. I'm showing it right now. Yep. All right. It's it, this piece is um, early. Or, mm -hmm. um, and I'm showing this a lot because I want to show the progression of the mark making. So mm -hmm. I mean, I was looking at a lot of Anselm Kiefer then and um, always looking at Turner. So mm -hmm. you know, maybe it was a, a bit of that Kiefer in there in that dark water um but you know it was the the painting was very saturated and um it's quite large mm -hmm. i still have that one mm -hmm. so um yeah that that's what i wanted to say uh, there's that. a lot of depth in that piece we have another one number two water now number two water is later so the mark making starts to change and i and um you know, I still have the sky there and and hopefully some light up there, I'm, you know, in the sky. I'm always mm -hmm. trying to put some sort of light in the paintings. Mm -hmm. um, and, but the mark making starts to change. Mm -hmm. it, it becomes much looser. Yes, and I can see that. I, I'd like to talk, because I'm sure other people are curious too. How do you start with your mark making? I work on the wall. Yes. You know, I put them up on the wall and I don't quite know where the painting is. I mean, this is for all of them. I don't quite know where the painting is going to go. Mm -hmm. um, I put, I start with an underpainting mm -hmm. and as of lately, I'm using yellow mm -hmm. back then. Maybe not. Um, it, the idea is to just get, get, get going. 
mm -hmm. get some paint on on the surface. So I'll put a light, you know, uh, brush, you know, and just start getting involved mm -hmm. with these. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll start, I, you know, I don't put out paint beforehand. And then I start squirting the paint and it's the color, you know, oh, I'm, you know, all right, I'm going to go with this color. I'm going to go with, it's kind of a dance. I'm going to go with that color. And I, um, I use a palette knife a lot. Mm -hmm. So in the marks um, in the bottom and uh, particularly at the beginning, when I was first started using these paintings, that was all palette knife. Mm -hmm. um, and, and um, a lot of scraping underneath. Mm -hmm. Less so now, more so earlier. Um, and then build, and then building the paint out. These are acrylic, by the way. Um, right. I was just going to say, I know you're working with acrylic and yeah. you're working with, because um, I did go to your show at the Jane Deere and Gallery. I was so impressed. Oh, so, I'm so taken by your work. Talk yeah. to us a little bit about how you prepare, because this is on paper. Right? They are on paper. Um, yeah. Talk so about that preparation too. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, I use um, BFK Reeves. Mm -hmm. I buy it on the roll. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, this is a, a, an involvement with the work too, even beforehand. So then I, you know, I had, I cut the paper from the roll and um, bevel the edges and I use Utrecht um, gesso, the professional gesso. Mm -hmm. And I put at least two coats on both sides. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a, you know, um, if I've been away from the studio for a while and I'm not really, it, you know, you have that little antsy feeling like you can't quite get into the painting yet, I prep. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's a great tip. That is a yeah. great tip. And I have to yeah, say- It um, gets you there and it's like, yeah. Um, well, so your work has okay. a heft to it too. Your paper has a heft to it. It has a very elegant, I mean, it's beautifully hung on the wall and that's because of how you prepare it. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. And totally. and the gessoing both sides will keep it from curling. Right. So, yeah. Right, right. Well, let's keep going. We have a lot of work to get to. Um, <laughs> I want to talk a bit about if you if you're if you're good with talking about your field series, because you've been working on this series for about 15 years, if I understand it correctly. Yes. And <laughs> for a while. Beautiful, beautiful work. Talk to us about that. We have one image here to lead us off. Image number nine, fields number nine. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is funny, but I, I used to, you know, I, the ones before, I, I, I was living in a garret, so I always saw the sky. Mm -hmm. This is something I thought about in hindsight. And then now I'm down in this little cottage and so I'm looking out at the gardens <laughs> and I think the paintings changed. <laughs> they became more about what I see when I take a walk, <laughs> you know, um, vegetation and fields. And I always have great memories of fields in Vermont. You know, they're, they're very, you know, there's nothing like a, a field of, wildflowers and, um, and, and I did gardening for a while. So I mean, that's there too. And so, yeah, so the colors I think uh, changed and, um, and it's some of them, you know, are still watery, but I think there's vegetation somehow in them now. Yes, um, yeah, they're, they're beautiful. And uh, the shows, the pieces that I saw at Jane's show are just so luminescent. We have another piece here, Fields 23. Yeah, that one. Yeah. So that's, I mean, in, um, uh, to compare that to the one before, I think the mark, again, the mark making is changing. Mm -hmm. it, um, it, it, um, there's less scraping in the paint. So it's a, there's a process that I, you know, that it means something to me, maybe more than the viewer, I'm not sure, but there's something about the process that's changing. And, um, and, and that's about all I can say about that one. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, going. That's as valid as anything. And we have a couple more, we have two more fields, 26 and 24, because it seems to me that 
you know, the coloration is slightly different. Your mark making, as you say, is slightly different. I mean, these are, you're, you're, you're very inspired by, you know, the natural environment for sure. You know, talking about your fields and your gardens. Is yeah. there anything specific that you want to say about fields 26 or 24? Well, again, 24 is lo really loosening up more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and let me say too that, um, you know, I, I, compared to the stripes, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes people think they're very different, but they're all about color. Mm -hmm. And so even when I'm paint, when I'm, when I'm painting the field series, it's um, the color I'm, I'm, there's an intuitive, um, there are intuitive choices I'm making about wh what color goes next to what color. Right. You know, when, when I'm, um, making these marks, you know, it's like, I'm, it, it's like, okay, now I'm going to add this. Now I'm going to add that. This, this to me is a very exciting part of painting. And mm -hmm. then, you know, sometimes, you know, I'll make some marks and I'll think, oh, I ruined the painting. And um, later <laughs> that will become my favorite part. Yeah. You know? and well said. That's, that's, uh, that's great. Yeah, it's, you know, the accidents and the, uh, it's, I guess it's, you know, that, those moments when I can allow something to happen. That yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Talk to us just for a sec before we move on to your more recent work regarding ponds. Tell us about this beautiful piece behind you. Oh, this piece behind me. This, this, um, yeah, this one is more recent and, um, you know, it's, the marks, again, the marks that change you care. Now, so in this one, I'm, it's not only the palette knife in here, I'm, I'm bringing the brushwork back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's, there's more, and this was done at the same time as the Pond series. I've been working on that, the Pond mm -hmm. series for a few years. And, mm -hmm. um, and I started to add some of these, they're kind of the, more of the drips. Um, right. We really see the drips in your, in your pond series. I, I think this is a good segue before we jump into the pond series, which um, I think are so elegant. Let's talk a little bit about, you had a wonderful quote that you shared with me about color. <laughs> yeah. It's Rainia Rilke. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, the story goes that it, it's from his book, Letters on Cezanne. Mm -hmm. which is a, it's a beautiful little book. It's a series of letters that he wrote to his wife, Clara Westhoff, while he was at the Cezanne retrospective in 1907 in Paris. And um, he starts one of the letters with, speaking about Cezanne's work, mm -hmm. um, painting is something that happens amongst the colors mm -hmm. and we must leave them alone completely so they can resolve the issue themselves. And love that. I love that. Kind of, that kind of sums it up. That's a good segue. Let's talk about uh, your pond series. We have three beautiful images here to talk about pond number five, number seven, and number 11. <laughs> yeah, so I suspect things might be changing a little bit um, with my work. Um, <laughs> so the pond series, I was actually. Um, camping up in New Hampshire and um, and the, there's a river mm -hmm. and and uh, I did a lot of hiking along the river and um, when I returned home I had this format this I don't know I, I don't know if I had you know the this 15 by 40 I I, I was I was inclined I, I was driven to, to work in that format Mm -hmm. And um, and so I did. I did these paintings. They're, they're gone. Those though they're sold. Those ones, the first two. Um, and I looked at it afterwards, and I said, Ah, this is the river. This is the river. You know, this is this is what's coming in. This is this is from. And you know, and I had that's when I started with this. Was like gushing water. It was more of a river. Those first two, mm -hmm. and um, so that started the format. Mm -hmm. And I 
I, I like it. There's something, um, uh, uh, this, uh, the compositions to me be, lend themselves to Asian art. You know, I love Asian art. Uh, I love the openness um, and and the quiet of of a- Asian paintings. Mm-hmm. And so, in, in somehow in my mind, I think about that. Um, well, so there's a delicacy to your work, I think, too. A sensitivity and a delicacy. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so so I'm still exploring those bigger ones too. Um, I'm due for a really big one, but <laughs> but but you know we'll we'll see. <laughs> well, Maria, we need to wrap up. I've I've loved our conversation, and I know others who are viewing and listening have loved it too because you're so well known for your teaching. And uh, let's let's um, wrap up. If you would share with everybody your URL where we can learn about you. Oh, it's just MariaMalatesta.com. Okay, MariaMalatesta.com. And I, I loved your comments when we talked earlier about the importance of just getting your work out there. Just say yes. Yeah, just say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> just say yes. I thought that was just brilliant. And um, honestly, you, you've contributed so much to your students. I love the fact that you have um, put on shows or worked with the Haskell House to put on shows for your students. I mean, that is just marvelous. Fun, they're great. I, I, I have to you know, say thank you to my students. They're just, um, they're my friends. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I know, I know a couple of they're your great. students. <laughs> who, feel that way, who feel that way about you? You have been such an inspiration. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Christine. Now, it's been great fun. I want to thank our listeners. I want to thank our sponsors. And uh, please uh, take a look at the screen for how you can access the recording with Maria Melatesta in the future. It's been a treat, Maria. Thank you so much. And thank you, Anders Johnson, for for, uh, putting the finishing touches on our video and making us all look good. All right, folks. Until next time.